Hey y'all, welcome to the Draper Bunch. My name is Carol. We're so glad that you're joining us today. If you're new here, please subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you. If you are coming back for a return visit, please give us a big thumbs up down below to let us know you're here. And y'all, don't forget to hit the bell down there so that you can get notifications when we have new content. So I'm gonna dive right in today. We're gonna start a series of videos. I promised that I would show you which curriculums we use with our children. And so today I'm going to start with video number one of three. Today I'm going to talk about ninth grade curriculum with our son Max and what we have ultimately ended up using this year that we have enjoyed and loved and has worked well for us. So when I choose a curriculum, I look at a few different things. I definitely consider my teaching style, I consider his learning style, and then obviously we consider content and what we want or what we feel like he needs to learn. Um, one of the things that's helpful when you're exploring curriculums is to look at the scope and sequence of a curriculum. So if you're looking online at curriculums and trying to decide if you will try to find a scope and sequence for the curriculum, it will tell you the scope of what they will be learning, in other words, the content, and then it'll give you the sequence or the order in which they're going to learn it. If you're interested in me doing a video about my thought processes and how I go about choosing curriculum, if you leave a comment below, I'm happy to make a video about that. I did leave a link down below for Kathy Duffy Reviews. She reviews homeschool curriculum and has a lot of detailed information about them that you can look through to try to help you start to filter through and choose what's right for you. So if you're interested, that link is below. I'm also leaving links below for most of the things that I show you today so that if you're interested in looking at them and deciding if they're right for your family, you can definitely click on those links and hopefully that will be helpful. So let's start. I want to show you first the planner that I use for Max. I felt like going into high school, I wanted to make sure that we were very organized and had a good record keeping system. So I have two books that I want to share with you that I use. The first one is called A Well-Planned Day Planner and it's a high school four year plan book. So inside this book, it is extremely comprehensive. It shares tips and tricks for high school. It has a sample transcript in here. So if you're homeschooling and you um, are not sure about how to create a transcript at the end of high school for your child, it has a sample in there. Hopefully you can see at least a portion of that. Um, it talks about the basic high school credits that most children should have, especially if they're going to college. It does show you the standard grading system for schools. So if you want to align yourself in that way, you can. The information is certainly there. You certainly don't necessarily have to if you don't want to. I would say that it has been my discovery that even though in our state we're not required to follow the credits that are given in that students are required to have in the public school high schools we have chosen to use that as a guide for what credits we want our son to get because he is planning to go to college and we feel that it will be certain colleges want to have those same credits so we are we definitely considered that in our planning of what coursework for him to take so this has all kinds of information in it. I can't even begin to tell you. It talks about different types of electives that you can get. It gives you um, calendars, a monthly calendar. It allows you to plan out your curriculum for the year. I kind of got out of order there. It allows you to plan out your curriculum for the year so you can determine what credits you will um, use and give for your child. And then it also gives, a you know, calendars. It gives a month overview calendar. I'm sorry if I feel like I'm stumbling over myself today. I'm not sure why. And then it gives a weekly kind of plan section so you can write plans in. Now this is for last July. That's why there's nothing there, so don't judge. Um, but it does give you every month that calendar. It gives you a place to write in attendance. It gives you a place to write in grades. It gives you a place to write. It doesn't give you a place to write in daily grades, but it gives you a place to write in averages. It gives you a place to write in the number of credits that you're getting. And like I said, this is a four year book. So we've only been working through the freshman year portion of it. Um, it does allow you to keep extensive records of what you're doing and when you're doing it. It gives at the end of a semester, it gives you the opportunity to write the attendance in there, um, their credit summaries, their end of the semester grades. It even has a place for them to kind of journal in there, my high school journey and kind of keep 
memories, if you will, in there, things they liked, things they didn't like. It just kind of gives you information about planning for college. So it does have, it is qu quite comprehensive and it is very helpful and we will use it for all four years. So it gives a great place to keep lesson plans and credits at a basic minimum. It has that, but it has many other features as well. So there's a link below if you want to check this out. And then on the flip side of that, I did buy a kind of really inexpensive grade book to keep their daily grades, math lesson grades, um, and just so that when I got ready to average them and put them in this book, I would already have them all written out. There are multiple electronic record keeping systems out there that you could use, that you can sign up for. Um, I'm not sure if there are any free ones, but I know there are some that cost money. I didn't do it because I am a paper pencil kind of person. I'm very good with technology. I like technology for many things, but for planning purposes and for grading, I really enjoy having just kind of old school paper pencil. So I definitely recommend um, these items if you're like me and you like paper pencil. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk to you about some of the choices I feel like were kind of easiest in givens, um, knowing Max as well as I know him and knowing myself and our homeschool style. And then at the end, I'm going to talk about the things that were a little bit more difficult for us. So we'll start with math because Max is in ninth grade. He is in algebra one this year. Our math curriculum of choice is teaching textbooks. So teaching textbooks has two versions. They have a 2.0 and a 3.0. The 3.0 has everything online. The scope and sequence is the same is my understanding. It's just presented a little bit differently. Um, but the basic gist of teaching textbooks is that it gives a lesson. It teaches the lesson. It has them do practice problems. And then it has them do a set of problems for the lesson. Um, usually it gives about five practice problems and about 20 to 25 additional problems beyond that in a lesson. So I like it because I feel like it's thorough. I feel like it does a good job teaching the math concepts. Um, we did not choose to do the online version because we live in a rural area and so access online sometimes is not stable. <laughs> So we actually chose to do the 2.0 version. So we have the student book here and then we have CD-ROMs for the computer here. So when Max is ready to do his math lesson every day, he has to have the, it has several CD-ROMs in it. So he has to choose whichever one goes along with the lesson that he's doing for that day. He inserts it in, clicks on the program, types in a password, and he can scroll to the lesson that he's on and he can watch the lecture from there. So inside the book is a printed copy of the lectures. So if he's doing, this is lesson 37 for example, everything that they say in the lecture is also printed in the book so that he can follow along and see what they're doing as they're demonstrating it. And then it goes straight into practice problems from there. When he does a problem in the math program, whether it's a practice problem or one of the regular problems kind of given afterwards, what it does is it, it gives him the problem on the screen. He's allowed to figure it out. We have like a white marker board and a, a marker that he uses to figure it out, or you could do it on pencil and paper if you wanted to, however they choose to do it. And then once he puts in the answer, it tells him if he's right or wrong. If he's wrong, it gives him the opportunity to have them show him how to do the problem. So if he did something wrong, made a mistake, doesn't understand, it, it demonstrates how to do the problem correctly. So I really like that because it's that immediate feedback on what he needs to do differently next time or if he's not understanding something. He's a very independent worker, so this works really well for him. However, I'm always close by and if he has a question or there's something he needs a little in-depth explanation of, then he always comes and gets me and asks me. Sometimes it's just explaining something a different way that helps. So I also do that sometimes too. But for the most part, he functions fairly independently with this math program and it does grade his lessons for him. So he, it grades everything. So I don't have to do any of that. So really you could be pretty hands off on this um, math curriculum if you wanted to be. Um, it works out well for us. We, we kind of have a mixture of hands off, hands on, depending on what he's doing and how difficult the concept is and if he needs my help or not. I review the things that he's done wrong regularly just so I can make sure there's not some kind of concept that he's stuck on that we need to do some sort of intervention on or do more work on. 
but one of the things I like about teaching textbooks is it is a spiral curriculum, which means that it introduces a concept, teaches it, has them practice it, and then it has them practice all the other skills or many other skills that they've learned along the way as well. So each lesson they continue to practice things and it keeps it fresh in their memory. And what happens is over the time of that spiral when they're exposed to the same concepts over and over again they eventually master it um, sometimes they master it right away sometimes over the course of times but it just kind of keeps everything fresh in their mind and they don't lose track of well i did this skill six months ago but now i don't remember how to do it so it just kind of keeps re um, introducing all the things that they've learned over and over again along with the new concepts so that it's a mixed bag of problems and they're able to just continue practicing all the skills together at the same time. So it does that. So it's broken up by chapters. At the end of each chapter, he has a test. There's a separate teacher book that has solutions and also has the test in them as well. So I really like this a lot. I think it's really student friendly to use. It's really teacher friendly to use. And we have found it to be very effective in teaching math. The next subject that I'd like to talk about is science. Max is ninth grade, so we decided that biology was the course that he should have in ninth grade based on everything that we saw. And we started last year using Apologia science curriculum with him and decided to continue with it in ninth grade for biology. So I'm going to show you the components and then I'll talk a little bit about the actual details of the curriculum. So Apologia has several different ways you can kind of buy kits and sets and individual pieces of the curriculum if you want to. We bought the whole set with everything in it. They offer um, a textbook, which looks like this. Let me show you. This is the textbook, biology textbook. Um, Apologia is a Christian-based science program. Um, I will tell you that my husband has a heavy science background and he definitely feels like that this curriculum does a really good job keeping scientific fact what it is um, in the book. So there's it, there's not a, really a bias in there in our opinion. Um, of course, we are a Christian family, but my husband does, you know, have a heavy science background. So he approved this curriculum, if you will, for our son. So it has a student textbook. It has a student notebook that you can buy as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say this up front that I absolutely feel that the student notebook is a necessity. Last year when we started Apologia, I did not get the student notebook and I will save you the headache of what I went through of trying to figure out the pacing of the curriculum and what to do when buy the student notebook. Don't skip out on the student notebook. I'll show you why in just a second. And then it also, you also can buy a microscope and then the lab kind of kit that has the pre-prepared slides and all those sorts of things in it that you need to do experiments with. Of course, a lot of the experiments call for household items or other items that you would go and get from the store, but um, all the essential science kit type items will come in that with that microscope and the science kit. They also sell the dissection kit Ew. for dissecting items or animals or whatever. So you can buy that as well, which we did do. Um, I will tell you here that I am not the science person in our house. My husband is, as I already said, and so he is the one that is doing the experiments and the dissections with our high school son. I'm very thankful for that. Two other components to the Apology of Biology that you can get are um, an audio book, which is nice, especially if you have an auditory learner. They can actually listen to the text being read to them um, while they're trying to do the mod different modules in the textbook. So it's very helpful to have this. It even works sometimes as a reinforcement, sometimes as um, sort of a study tool, I guess you would say, when they're getting ready to be at the end of a module. It's broken down by modules, not chapters in the science book. So when they're getting at the end of a module, if they want to go back and review, it's a faster way to read the material and to look through it, um, through this. So this has been helpful for us, but it's definitely not a necessity. The other one is a video instruction DVD. So we have found this to be useful um, especially in a few instances. There haven't been a lot, but there have been a couple of instances where an experiment was coming up and we did not have access to something we needed to complete the experiment. It was helpful to be able to watch the experiment on the video instruction DVD. 
Sometimes if there's a concept that's a little bit more difficult, Max will go in and just watch that portion of the DVD because it just helps them be able to understand the material a little bit better. So I will tell you that I, this definitely gets my seal of approval. I think it is very well done. It's very student user friendly. It's very teacher user friendly. It doesn't require a lot of pre-planning on the teacher's part. Um, except for maybe for the experiments, but the other things, it doesn't really require a whole lot of um, pre-planning on your part. So I will also tell you that this textbook for science and apology is written at a, in a conversational way. So it makes it a little bit easier to read and easier to understand. And we've also found that to be very helpful. So the textbook is laid out in modules, as I said earlier. And each module has sections in it. So here is like module one at the beginning of the book. And like I said, it's written conversationally. At the end of at the end of certain sections in the module, it will have some questions that are the on your own questions here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so it has on your own questions which are highlighted and they answer those questions after they read that portion of the module. At the end of the module, they have a study guide to complete and then they have a test at the end of each module. So it's really nicely laid out. It's very easy to follow if you have the student notebook. Um, you could certainly create your own pacing if you wanted to, but the nice thing about the student notebook is it has a daily schedule in, so it has boxes for each day of what they should complete and which questions they should answer, or if they need to complete an experiment, that is listed in here as well. The other component of the study guide is it gives them a place to answer the questions from the textbook, the on your own questions, and the study guide questions, and it also has the space for them to record notes from each module, as well as it gives them all of the space that they need to record everything from their experiments. So it's very comprehensive. It gives them a place to record everything. It really is just a notebook that has all the space for everything they need to do inside of it. And it also has the pacing in the front for you as well. So it's another one of those open and go. I can open it. I can look at this day and see he needs to read these pages and these are the questions he needs to answer today. So it's very helpful and plan, you know, um, saving time on planning because it's already all laid out for you day by day what you should do. I did not know that when I bought the Apologia curriculum last year and so I was trying to figure out what he was supposed to do every day on my own but it was actually already laid out for me in the student notebook. So please make sure you buy the student notebook if you're going to use Apologia. We find it to be extremely, extremely helpful. So those are the components in the textbook. It has the material to read, the questions to answer. It has all the study guide questions, but the student notebook actually has all of those things in it as well. And it gives them a space to answer it so that all the information is together in one place. And it gives you the pacing. So those are the two components of that. And like I said, at the end of each module, they have a test. So it's really well laid out, very organized, very easy to use, very student friendly. Max actually enjoys that curriculum as well. Um, so definitely highly recommend Apologia. So teaching textbooks for Algebra 1, Apologia for Biology, and then next we'll talk about history. We use the Knotgrass History Curriculum. It is a Christian history curriculum. If you are secular, you certainly should look through Knotgrass if it's something you think you might be interested in. However, it is very heavily, heavily Christian based. It has a lot of biblical history in it as well. One of the things we like about Knotgrass is it has three courses contained in one. It has a history course, a literature course, and a Bible course. So Bible can count as an elective if you choose to do that portion of the curriculum. And then it has history inside of it. And then along with that history, it has literature that they read um, consecutively with what they're studying in history that kind of goes along with that time frame. So it meshes nicely together and it allows them to earn three credits during this particular curriculum. So the world, it's world history is the ninth grade curriculum. And it actually has two textbooks, one for the first half of the year and one for the second half of the year. So there's two student textbooks. There's a student review book. There's a quiz and exam book. There are um, 
there is a literature package that you can buy that has all the books that they read with that curriculum. You can also go check those out from your library as well or buy them from a used bookstore. So there are a lot of different ways to get those literature books other than purchasing their package. I do purchase their package just because it gives it all to us at one time and then I just don't have to worry about um, it having to find it somewhere else. So to give you an example, a couple of the books that he's had to read this year have been Animal Farm and by George Orwell, The Tale of Two Cities. So very, very good, strong literature component in this history program. So let me say that out of the gate so that I don't forget to say it later, but definitely highly recommend the literature portion of this history program because it does give um, books that are not biblical necessarily. It gives good strong classic literature. Um, another one that he's read this year has been Julius Caesar. So great literature that goes along with this history program. It's very impressive. So the components that I showed you are the student textbook and inside the student textbook it has um, units and each unit is broken into five lessons. So you can see in the table of contents there, each unit is broken into five lessons. And at the beginning of the unit, let me get to one here. At the beginning of the unit, it gives them memory work. It tells them what books they're going to use. And then it gives them a choice of a project to complete during that unit. And those projects vary from hands-on projects to writing a paper, um, sometimes memorizing scripture. So there are a lot of different types of projects that go along with the unit and they get to choose one of them. I'm looking at this first unit and it has one, two, three different options. Um, I find that there, the options that they give have to do with a lot, you know, some of them are writing essays, some of them are creating posters or using clay to create something, so very tactile. And then there's also usually one that has to do with scripture if that's your thing and you want to have your child memorize additional scripture, then you could do that as well. We try to um, have Max vary the projects that he chooses so he's not choosing the same type of project every time. I don't necessarily always make him do the artistic ones if he doesn't want to, but I do try to have him vary between the two or three different choices depending on some units give more choices than others. And then it gives a lesson and with each lesson it gives a text for them to read and then at the end of the lesson it gives their assignments in a neat little box. Again, this is a very organized and well laid out curriculum. It's very student friendly. It's very teacher friendly, very much you can open and go sort of deal here. So it gives assignments. It gives an assignment for Bible usually if you're getting that Bible credit. It will usually give questions for them to answer in the student review book. I'm trying to get all my materials here. So they're inside the student review book are the questions that they're supposed to answer. So when it tells them to answer questions, then they would go into the student review book. It also sometimes gives them some additional things to read. Um, it'll give them a Bible assignment, questions to answer, tell them to work on their project. It may give them additional historical literature to read in this book, which is in their words. And this book has documents, speeches, poems from history. In the previous curriculum that we used from Not Grass, which was an American history one, it would give newspaper excerpts and things like that from history. So it really has a lot of historical value in here. So it'll give them the lesson to read and then the assignments at the end, which include sometimes all of those things, sometimes none of those things. And at the end of the unit, it will give them a quiz. So we love Not Grass history. It's been great for us. Now I'm going to move on to the part of curriculum that has been a little bit more of a struggle for us really since we brought Max home. One of the things we figured out early on is that he was really struggling with writing and grammar. He's very well spoken. He has an excellent vocabulary, but he just really struggled when it came to getting his ideas down on paper. And we found that there was a large gap of learning with his grammar. Um, I elementary schools don't teach that quite the same way that they used to anymore and so we just found that they're really he didn't have a really good sense of that so in the years that have followed we've tried so many multiple different programs and things I won't even go into all the things that we've tried and this year when we got to the history component and some of the projects were writing essays we really begin to see the deficit for writing 
So I told you in our introductory vlog, and I've probably said it sometime since, that we're going to try to be very careful to be transparent and real with you. It's really difficult as a parent anyway, whether you homeschool or not, when you are able to constantly compare yourself to other people through social media, through vlogs, through blogs, um, speaking specifically as a homeschool mom, many times what we see are things that appear to be perfect homeschools, perfect homes, perfect families, perfect bedrooms, you know, and things just aren't really that way. And so it's my goal here to not paint a picture for you that everything is perfect and easy peasy lemon squeezy all the time because it is not. And so one of the things that we struggled in teaching, one of the things that he struggled in learning because he had such a large gap there to start with was grammar and writing. We've tried so many different things. He has made progress, not the progress that I'd like for him to. And we know that writing is very, very important in communicating in a job in succeeding in college. There are so many reasons why writing is important. So when we made the discovery this year, we tried several different things at the beginning of the year and none of them, we didn't seem to be making a lot of progress in any of them. So I'm not going to talk about those right now. I will eventually review some of those curriculums for you and let you make your own decision, but they did not work for us. So what we finally discovered was IEW, which is Institute for Excellence in Writing. And in looking at that as a way to teach writing, what we discovered is they also have a grammar program called Fix-It Grammar. So currently what we're doing right now is using Fix-It Grammar and IEW Writing with Max for Language Arts. I will tell you that because we wanted to make sure that he absolutely had no gaps in his learning in that, um, Fix-It Grammar contains six, there are six books of Fix-It Grammar. Um, I think their recommendation is that book one you start in fourth grade, maybe. I don't remember right off the top of my head, but I think that they recommend you start this in fourth grade. So what we have done is begin somewhat of a grammar writing intensive with Max that we will continue through the summer, even when we have finished all of the other subjects, so that we can try to catch up, if you will, a little bit and give a more solid foundation in that. So that's a weakness for us. It's something that we struggled with. We feel confident that we found something now that's going to work well to help him become a successful writer and we're planning to use it with the other children as well, provided that it will work well for them too. You always have to be open to change because you never know what's going to come and their learning styles may not match. But right now this seems to be a pretty solid program and he's enjoying it. He's learning a lot from it. And so we have, we started him on book one, even though he's in high school, we started him on book one. We're going to work our way through the books. There's only six of them and he still has three more years of school after this. So our plan is to try to get through about half of the books through the summer if we can. We may not get that far. We'll see. Um, but we're, we're not trying to rush through it. We're taking our time, making sure the concepts are solid in his mind and that he is able to understand what's going on. So we're using Fix-It Grammar for grammar and language arts, and we're using IEW for writing. And what we've decided to do is since we were starting him at a lower level, I love the way this grammar program is laid out. It is just fabulous. It is very user-friendly. It does require teacher involvement, especially if you're using it with younger children. It requires teacher involvement. So it gives a one page of instructions to the teacher at the beginning that you can see. It's one page of instructions. It's very methodical in the fact that it's laid out with what you're going to do every day. You're going to do certain things every day and then on day one you're going to do this, day two, three, and four you're going to do this, and day five you're going to do this. And it does the same thing every single lesson, which is perfect. So it starts out each with, a, it's laid out in a week-long lesson. Because Max is advanced, obviously, in his age and his thinking and his vocabulary, what we decided to do when we decided to start him at book one was that we would have him do a week's worth at a time instead of doing one day at a time. And I can explain to you why. Because it's not a whole lot of work. It doesn't actually take very long to do a day's worth of work. So on day one, it introduces a concept like nouns. And it has material to read and understand about whatever it's introducing. Nouns, articles, verbs, it doesn't matter. And then it has you, it has them read 
sentence. As you can see, it's laid out day by day. So on day one, you do the instruction and you do the day one sentence. It has them define the word in bold and then it has them identify certain things in the sentence and put the correct end mark at the end of the sentence. So it starts out really simple. You can see this is from the beginning. And then each day it has a new sentence for them to look up a vocabulary word and correct in the same way that they did the day before. So each week adds something to it. So it starts with nouns and then it goes to articles. So they have to do articles and nouns. So whatever concepts it teaches, you have to mark those concepts and then any other concepts that you've already learned. You have to do correct end marks. There are other proofreading things that it teaches. You can see it's teaching them when to start a new paragraph. And as they complete the end of the week, on day five, they rewrite all the material they've corrected that week in a notebook separately. And by the end time they complete the book, they've written a whole story. So they've rewritten a whole story. So the story continues from week to week to week, just adding new skills as they go. I hope that makes sense. It's very easy to use, very easy to follow. And so you can see since it's such short work, it's four sentences basically to correct a week with a new skill. And because Max already knows a lot of these skills, they're really just review for him. We're having him do a week each day so that we can accelerate through the easier part a little bit quicker. So like I said, there are six books. It obviously gets increasingly more difficult throughout the books, but by the time they get to the end of it, from what I can see, it looks like they will have a very, very good grasp on grammar. The other thing it does is it aligns beautifully with the writing program, the IEW writing program, because they're by the same company. So a lot of the things it teaches in the grammar lines up with the curriculum at the same time in the writing. So the writing has levels A, B, and C, I believe. I think C is supposed to be the high school level. We've chosen to start max at level A. Again, a little too easy for him. We just want to hit and reinforce everything along the way and make sure there are no gaps because it will be very easy for him to complete A and probably B by the end of the summer and then by C, he'll be ready to go. And hopefully by the time he finishes all of it, he'll be a proficient writer. So the IEW writing comes with um, a notebook and different components that you put in the notebook, different tabs. Um, it also has a section in here where it's laid out lesson by lesson, day by day, what you're supposed to do, <clears throat> which is nice. Um, I feel that this is probably out of all the curriculums I've shown you today is probably one that requires far more teacher involvement than anything else. It also comes with video instruction. So typically on the first day, maybe they'll watch the video instruction. He'll tell them exactly what they're supposed to do in the video instruction. And then they go into the notebook to do whatever it is that he, whatever writing task he's given them to do. That's a very basic view of it. And he adds different skills and he does demonstrations and he does examples. And so it's very, very, very helpful. There is a teacher kit that you can get to go with the IEW that explains how to teach and how to coach your writer. It gives a lot more explicit instruction if you're very, if you're not comfortable teaching writing. So it gives you a lot of that information that you can buy as well. I believe it has DVDs and a book that you can read to help the mom or the teacher if they need it. So again, I have linked that down below. You can do more research into that. A lot of people speak very highly. I've had a lot of friends who have used IEW with their kids and their students have done well on the writing portion of the SAT as well as been successful in college. So this um, program I'm hoping is going to help us be able to fill the gaps and kind of catch up where we need to. And that's me being real. We're not where we need to be in writing, but we're working on it. We have a plan and, a plan and we're going to stick to that plan. So those are the curriculums that I have used with Max this year for his basic core subjects. He does have other activities that he participates in that he can get elective credits in. Um, he participates in Irish dancing as well as he takes saxophone lessons. So all of those things kind of count as electives. The Bible course portion of history counts as an elective. So those things certainly help out with credits as well. So teaching textbooks for math, Apologia for biology, not grass for world history, IEW for writing, and IEW fix it grammar for grammar. The literature component is contained in the not grass history and that is what we use for literature. We also allow him to explore and read obviously books of interest that he 
likes as well. He loves to read encyclopedias and nonfiction, so that obviously helps a lot. I think history comes pretty easily because of that. So I hope that these curriculum, this sharing of curriculum and these, I guess they're a review of sort, not really a review, um, because obviously they're what we enjoy using and we think work effectively for our family. But I hope that that's helpful to you. High school can be a little scary because you want to make sure that they're prepared for whatever their next phase of life is. And so trying to pinpoint curriculum that's going to do that sometimes feels a little overwhelming. But these are the things that we have found that work really well for Max. Um, he is very much a kinesthetic um, auditory type learner and really enjoys a combination of all three learning styles in his learning to help kind of bring everything home. And so it, these curriculums, I think, touch a little bit of all of those. I hope that this has helped you. If you have any questions, please leave them for me. I have li left links below for most of these curriculums for you. If there's anything else you need, don't hesitate to ask. Please give us a big thumbs up and let us know you were here. Up next, we'll have a couple of different videos coming up. One is going to be sharing curriculum for our daughter, Ella, who is by public school standards, a third grader, but she's actually doing some fourth grade work. So we'll be sharing a video similar to this with her curriculums in it. And then also we will be doing some Disney cruise tip videos. So if you have any videos that you'd like to see about homeschooling, especially, please leave them below. Also, I need one more thing from you. If you have questions that you would like to ask our children about homeschooling or about Disney cruising, please leave those questions in the comments below. In a future video, we're going to interview the children and introduce you to them and we'll ask your questions and you can see what their answers are. Thanks so much for watching. See y'all real soon.